song we look at is called Surely Goodness and Mercy. Let me share something with you. It says, a pilgrim was I a wandering. In the cold night of sin did I roam. When Jesus, the kind shepherd, found me, and now I'm on my way home. Verse 2 says, he restores my soul when I'm weary. He gives me strength day by day. He leads me beside the still waters. He guards me each step of the way. Verse 3 says, when I walk through the dark, lonely valley, my Savior will walk with me there, and safely his great hand will lead me to the mansions he's gone to prepare. The name of that song is Surely Goodness and Mercy. And in that song it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know, in Psalms 23, 6, that song is a reflection of that verse. Because in that verse, the Bible says, and I read, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What does that mean to you and me today in 2023? Well, you know, I have a lot of people who often say, why are you a Christian, chaplain? Why do you pastor? Why do you work so hard? What is it that makes the Bible so special to you? Well, it's because of Psalms 23 and verse 6. I'm a Christian and the Bible is, is special to me because it's what's following me that makes the difference. It's not because I'm special. It's not because I'm anything great or powerful or perfect because I'm not. Psalms 23, 6 holds the key to who I am and what I'm going to become. You know, in that psalm, the Bible says this, a pilgrim was I and a wandering. In the cold night of sin, I did roam. When Jesus, the kind shepherd, found me, and now I'm on my way home. Listen, what's important is what is following me. Before my life, I was lost. I was wandering. Before I was one who was a ship without an anchor. Think about your life. I was confused. Before I became a Christian or a child of God, I was confused. I did not know which way was up. Oh, which way was down. And the world kicked me. The world tossed me. The world beat me up. The world bullied me. And I was living and am living in a world that's, that's just full of a lot of sin and evil. Amen? Amen? The fact of the matter is we cannot escape where we are and what we are surrounded by. But before I was lost and I was wondering, in the cold night of sin, there I walked on this road, this dark, lonely, cold road that was only taking me to one place. That place was hell. Whether I knew it or whether I didn't know it, I was on the highway to hell. Amen? I was there. And the good thing about it is on this road, there was a small, tiny voice. Like the song says, Jesus, the kind shepherd, found me. There I am, sitting, thirsty, hungry, cold, lonely, on that road, walking through my life with very little help or direction. And here comes Jesus. Jesus reminded me of the road that I was on. He reminded me of the destruction. He reminded me of the loneliness. He reminded me of my lost state. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. That's a payday that those who don't know God will endure. But Jesus said, 
I can save you. I can rescue you. I can help you. I can give you a chance. That's what he told me on that cold, dark, lonely road. With me lost and walking without direction, Jesus steps in and he stands between me and that dark destiny. You know, when I think about that, in days gone by, I'm so thankful. Romans 5, 8 says, while I was yet in sin, Christ died for the ungodly. He died for me. He died for me. He died for us all. We all are on that dark and lonely road. And the only thing that stands between us and rescue, us and repair, us and change in direction is Jesus. The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. The Bible says that by his stripes we are restored. The Bible clearly points out by his stripes we have a second chance. Amen. Sometimes families don't give you a second chance. Am I right about it? Sometimes jobs and employers, they don't give you a second chance. Am I right about it? But this Jesus says, I will give you a second chance. I stand in the middle of this road like a traffic cop directing traffic. And I am here to let you know that there is a way. You know, John 14, 6, the Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus stands in the middle of our roads. And in the middle of our roads, as Jesus stands there, he is directing us. You know, when I think about the second verse, the Bible talks about what happens. What happens in my change? As I'm cold on that dark road and lonely, Jesus speaks to me. And this is what happens. He restoreth my soul when I'm weary. He giveth me strength day by day. He leads me beside still waters and guards me every step of the way. My friends, let me tell you about Jesus. Before I'm lost and wondering, but after Jesus meets me on that road, now I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? John chapter 1, verses 29 and verse 36. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. In Matthew 1, 21, the Bible says that this Jesus came to save people from their sins. Jesus came to take us off the road. He came to take us off the road. I don't know about you, but I was ready for a change. I was ready to turn around. I was ready to change direction. I wanted things to get better. And they did. Because the Bible says that in the midst of my weariness, in the midst of my troubles, in the midst of my pain and frustration, Jesus restored my soul and he gave me new life. He gave me a second chance. He gave me a fresh start. And the Bible says, because I have accepted him as the way, the truth, and the life, when I walk through this life, Psalms 23, 6 applies. Surely goodness and mercy follow me. Why? Because he has given me strength by day. Surely goodness and mercy follow me. Why? Because he gives me strength day by day. Surely goodness and mercy follow me. Why? Because it is Jesus Christ that leads me down and through the still waters, my friends. It is Jesus Christ that guards me each step of the way. Because my friends, when you leave that road, make no mistake. The devil won't leave you alone. Amen. Just because you walk down the road and you accept Jesus Christ and you allow him to give you a second chance and you take that new direction, the devil knows your steps. He knows where you are. He knows 
where you're going. He knows what you're going to do. So he comes after you. He does not surrender and he does not quit. That is why we have to have the Jesus Christ that I know guarding our steps along the way. Because it is Jesus that gives us strength. You know, in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, the Bible says this. It says that we will not faint, nor will we grow weak. Why? Because we have trusted God. And because we have trusted God, we travel on the wings of eagles. The power comes from above to sustain you and me. You are never, ever alone. You know, I'm reminded of what was told to me as I walked in here this morning. The gentleman, he told me, he says, where's your wife? I said, well, she's with my son. We brought him back from college, and he uh, went to meet the group for the first time in over a year. And so that's where she is. I said, I'm going to do it alone today. You know what the guy said? He says, you're never alone. You're never alone. Wisdom. Wisdom. I said, well, I'm going to have to go it alone. He says, you're never alone. And you know he's right. We are never alone. Because if we have our trust in the Lord, God does not leave us alone. He will not allow the devil to enter your camp and cause turmoil, chaos. He will not allow the devil to stir things up to the point to where you are confused. My friends, the truth is, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. When I walk in the Lord, when I am planted, Psalms 1, I'm like a tree by the rivers of water. I draw my strength and my power from the Lord. When I became a child of God, Saved by the blood of the Lamb, it was given to me the courage to take on life. Life had new meaning. My mind and my heart had changed. I had the confidence to overcome those things that used to beat me down. Those things that used to make me feel bad. Those things that used to just entrap me and entangle me. No longer did I have to worry about that, brothers and sisters, because I recognized that when I accepted Jesus Christ, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll find strength, I'll find peace, I'll be guarded against the evil one. You know, when I grew up, when I played basketball, you're running up and down the court playing basketball, you're setting up the plays and you're shooting those, uh, back in the day, it was two-pointers. Eh? The three-point didn't exist back then. But, you know, what I used to like to hear running up and down that basketball court, I used to hear the cheerleaders, you got to fight to win. And they clap. You got to fight to win. They clap, 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 clap. You got to fight to win. And I'm going to tell you, if you were behind two points, or if you were behind five points, that just kind of, Got you worked up. You said, you got to fight to win. Next thing you know, there's a two-pointer. Next thing you know, there's a stolen ball. Next thing you know, there's a block shot. Next thing you know, there's a layup. Next thing you know, you're in the lead. What started that process was the cheers from the cheerleaders saying, you got to fight to win. And my friends, when you trust Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ injects his love, and Jesus Christ injects his power and the Holy Spirit in your life. My friends, the next step is you have the fight to win. We know the devil is coming back. We know the devil is coming after us. We know that he's going to send people into our lives to cause us to try to fall and fail and quit and give up and make fun of us and ridicule us and talk about Jesus Christ. We know all of that's coming. But you've got to fight to win. you got to fight to win. you got to have the confidence to overcome. And we can't win that fight. You know, when I accepted Christ, Galatians 2.21 meant a whole lot to me. Still means. 
Galatians 2.21 says simply, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the faith I live, I live now by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, that's enough for me right there. I can fight to win, knowing Galatians 2.21, that I'm crucified with Christ. Christ died for my sin. I am a new creature. And as a new creature, I live each day realizing where my faith comes from. And I build on that. And there's nothing that can take that away. The old man has no more power over me. Because mercy and goodness follow me all the days of my life. The old me, the old friends, the old ways, they are gone because I recognize Galatians 2.21 and the power of God in it. What follows me, my friends, is the goodness and mercy of God. When I think about living today, what does that mean? It simply means that each day that the sun comes up, I have one priority. And that priority is Matthew 6 to 33. Each day I get up, I say, I will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto me. I will seek God first and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will walk according to his precepts and concepts in Titus 2 and 12, the Bible says what? It says that each day that I live, I will live soberly. I will live righteously. I will live godly in this present world. Because I know the devil is a roaring lion. The devil is a roaring lion. We learn he's seeking whom he may devour. You've accepted Christ. He wants you back. You left the kingdom of hell. He wants you back. You must be on guard. And the only way to ensure that is to put him first and allow the goodness and mercy to follow you. And the second thing is this, anticipation. I love that old ketchup commercial. It was a Heinz ketchup commercial. It was on TV. It was the longest 30 second commercial I've ever seen in my life where they sit there and they take the ketchup bottle and they turn it and the ketchup doesn't just run out of the bottle, does it? It's just slow 30 seconds of just watching the little red dot appear and then seeing the ketchup just slowly ease and ooze out of the bottle, bloop, right onto the burger. And then the statement anticipation 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 is making you wait making you wait you know when i think about psalms 23 6 and what follows me in this life god's goodness and god's mercy it is that very thing that motivates me with anticipation am i there yet no. Have I made it? No. I'm not in heaven yet. But it's the anticipation. It's the waiting. That's the best part. Because you know when that ketchup hits that burger and you bite into it, it's going to taste good because it has a ketchup on it. Well, my friends, think about. Think about what's going to happen. You're anticipating as you've accepted Christ, you've trusted him. You're walking in his goodness and his mercy. And some great day, you're going to wake up in glory. And he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. My friends, it is the anticipation of that great moment. Just like the bite into that cheeseburger. It tastes so good. Well, that great day when the Lord says, well done, it's going to feel good. And the anticipation leading up to it is beautiful because you're saying, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And when it happens, you're going to go, oh, glory, thank you, Jesus. Thank God 
I waited for this great moment. Thank God I didn't quit. Thank God I didn't get the miracle whip. Thank God I didn't turn around. I know I'm hungry. And it may be hard waiting on that ketchup to drop onto that hamburger. But my friends, it is worth it. It Whatever we go through, whatever we do, whatever is happening in our lives, hearing God say, well done, is going to be worth it. The anticipation of it is what motivates me to keep on going, to not quit or turn around. Anticipation is making you wait, but the anticipation of hearing well done is enough to make me say, yes, Lord, I will put you first. Yes, Lord, I will trust you. And the Lord will send that spirit, and that spirit will send goodness and mercy, and it will follow you all the days of your life in anticipation of that great day when you hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant anticipation you know the third verse of that song says and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and I shall feast at his table spread for me surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days all the days of my life my friends that anticipation is worth it it's worth accepting Christ it's worth receiving his spirit it's worth walking in favor with God. It's worth the opportunity for a new life and a second chance and a fresh start. It's worth the old things being passed away. My friends, Psalms 23.6 says it all. It must be an everyday walk. And we must wake up with that outlook that as I walk with Christ, crucified with Christ, committed to Christ, as I walk with Jesus, with the anticipation of what is about to happen, the last day, the great day, the judgment day, the well done day, I myself know what's following me. And I hear the angels and I hear Jesus, like those cheerleaders, those cheerleaders who encouraged us in the fight. You've got to fight to win. You've got to fight to win. And my friends, that's what motivates me. You've got to fight to win every single day. You've got to wake up with that in your heart and on your mind. You've got to fight to win. And the angels of the Lord and Jesus himself, they are there encouraging you. They are cheering you. And he has sent the spirit of God. Surely goodness and mercy is following the child of God who says and is committed to fight to win. Who is committed to be confident to overcome. Who is committed to have courage to take on whatever this life throws at you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. My friend, Psalms 23 is such a beautiful song. Verse 6 is often overlooked. But I want to offer you that verse as a key to your everyday life and living. Because it is the difference between staying on the road or going in a different direction. And I hope, trust, and pray that it's our desire today to stay on the road and fight the good fight because you gotta fight to win. You gotta have the confidence that God is with you. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, Romans 8, 31. There's no reason for us to quit, fail, or walk away. You have the victory right in your hand. You know, I'm reminded of football, the analogy. When some teams have the lead going into the final minute, and somehow, some way, the other team marches down the field and kicks a field goal and wins the game. 
And many announcers will say they played a great game, but, but, defeat was snatched. A victory was snatched out of the jaws of defeat or something like that. Go something like that. Basically, they lost the game because they didn't follow up. Defeat from the jaws of victory. We don't want that to be said of us. Defeat from the jaws of victory. You are on a winning team. You have the winning recipe and ingredients. Let's run the race and finish the race knowing that goodness and mercy follows us everywhere we go, all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, let us pray.